Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of y'all who are not familiar, my name is Kristen Hoffman and I love thrifting, homemaking, and intentional living. So today I'm just gonna take y'all with me on a little homemaking journey that I've been meaning to go on for like years, yet I have avoided like the plague. And that is cooking sourdough. So listen, I know everybody and their mom who likes all the same things that I like knows how to do this and I do not. And so I have been watching some tutorials, reading some blogs on how to do this successfully. And I'm really trying to equip myself to be able to do this without so much failure. Y'all, I feel like no matter what I do, I fail at everything. And the first try, the second try, the third try, I just, I really struggle with some of this stuff. And so doing this, this is like science y'all. And so we're gonna give it a whirl. And you know what? If I don't fail, then it's a treat for me. And if I do fail, then it's a treat for you. So it's a win-win situation, I guess. First of all, let me apologize for this wig. She is out of control today. I literally just finished doing my hair and it's always so big on the very first day. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and get started. You don't necessarily need a jar this large in order just to have a sourdough starter. Um, in fact, maybe it would even be easier to start in a smaller jar, but I have seen pictures of these things like overflowing. And so, yeah, girl does not like mess. And so I've decided to just start out with a big jar and just pray that it doesn't wind up pouring over. I'm gonna go ahead and take down my flour. You guys, look at these jars. First of all, I wanna thank Cami from the blog Tidbits. When I went and visited her home in Utah this past fall, she had, I think she has these, I can't remember, but she was showing these to me and she found them on Amazon. I will link them here below, I guess. And I just thought that they were so pretty. I heard that it's good to do like a third cup of flour. I guess I will fill this third cup almost with water. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but I'm guessing that that's about a quarter cup of water. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in here. Now that I'm mixing this, I think I'm remembering that isn't the recipe for glue that you make like in elementary school, isn't that just water and flour as well? I don't know, do you guys ever have to do like paper mache or anything like that when you were in elementary school? Am I literally just making and eating glue? So I am just using like an all purpose flour. I don't have anything special in this house. Maybe I could try something in the future, but I think I'm just, I'm honestly just starting super, super basic because I am so new to this. But I will say that this seems like the consistency that I was seeing. It's like not supposed to just like drip off the end of your spoon or anything like that. All right, so this is how this currently looks. It's good to put it in a warm place. But honestly, our kitchen is the coldest room in our house. Now I know that it's supposed to get some air. Maybe I'll just leave the lid off of it tonight. And I can't really think of anywhere warm in this house to put it. So I'll just put it next to our sugar and our coffee and our flour for now. And we'll see if we get any activity after one day. I'm not necessarily holding my breath at this point, but I will show you guys tomorrow how it's looking. All right, so that was officially day one. Seems pretty easy, but you know, I have a knack for making really easy things really difficult, so. But you guys can see here, once I get the camera in, that I actually had a like crust that formed on top of this. This is because I left the lid off and this was my indication that that was a bad idea. So I scraped that off and fed the good stuff that was underneath.
Okay, so when I was done, I decided to lightly put the lid on, not leave it off like I had the night before. And I did put it up on our shelf, but then I wound up moving it over to our high chair because it is right above our register where all of our heat comes out. And as you guys can see, there were little bubbles. I was very excited that after just the second night, there was already a little bit of activity. But as you guys can see, as I started moving this around, it was very much like pasty inside. There was not any bubbles or anything like that that so you know I just decided to discard most of what was in it and give it another feeding okay it's wild over here we're on day four got the sourdough starter I can actually hear the bubbles <laughs> I've actually kept it in the bathroom by the register last night to try to get it to be a little bit more active so we're gonna go ahead and feed it one more time so y'all can see that I put too much water in it this last time because it's really liquidy so I'm gonna discard a lot of this and then try to put in a little bit more flour next time how much are you gonna get rid of <laughs> I feel like when I was originally you're getting rid of all of it babe what are you doing well you're supposed to get rid of at least half if not more it's weird though because when I was mixing it last night, it didn't feel this liquidy. It makes me wonder if I waited too long to feed it. All right, so this is where we're at right now. We'll see how this does tomorrow. So I went and I took a spatula and I tried to like shove it all down on the side so that I could see if it was rising or not in the night. And I've been keeping it next to the register. I took it and put it up here a few hours ago um, just to remind myself to film this video. I don't know, do you guys see any rising? To me, it doesn't look like it's like rising and falling or anything, which makes me wonder if it's active at all. It's been warm and so I don't even know. Anyway, let's go ahead and discard half of this again and put in a little bit more and see if maybe tomorrow we'll have some more activity. I don't know. Okay, it may be too thin again. It's not like bubbly or anything like that. So you know what? I think I'm actually gonna get rid of most of this then. And then next time around, I'm just gonna put less water in and a little bit more flour. This is definitely sticky this time. So I'm sure that some of you ladies are like yelling at me through the screen of what I should be doing in this situation. And listen, I may not be able to hear you in this very moment, but I am interested in what you guys would suggest for fixes for all that I'm doing. <laughs> Honestly, like even if I can't fix it in this video for future sourdough stuff, maybe I could, that could be helpful then too. Let's pray for tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so here we are and y'all, I'm not seeing like any activity like there's barely any bubbles in there. What am I doing wrong here? I really don't understand. I've had this like on the register to our, where our heat comes out. And so I thought that it would be in a warm enough place that it would be able to maybe activate it a little bit more, but I just don't even see any like indication that it's like rising and settling or anything like that. So I don't know. I must be doing something wrong. I don't know. I'm not like really seeing a whole lot of anything going on here. So I'm just going to feed it again. I don't know. Day five. Here you go. I'm not even going to film myself doing it because y'all have seen it. I'm feeling discouraged. Can you tell I'm feeling discouraged right now? Why can't I ever do anything right? Hello friends. Okay. So I just took this lid off of my starter today and then when it fell off, it's like super wet on top. Not really sure what that means, but this is how we are looking. And again, it doesn't look very active. So I'm wondering if I need to start feeding this like every 12 hours as opposed to every 24 hours. Here's the deal though. I can barely remember to feed this thing every 24 hours. I'm nervous that if I commit to 12 hours, I'm just gonna fail even more. So let me set y'all up here and we will start mixing this thing up. I think that when I've seen people do this before, they say that when it looks like this, that that means that it's hungry. And so I probably just need to start doing another 12. I'll just start doing 12 hours. So right now it's 2.39. So I'll just wake up at 2.39 in the morning. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll probably just do it once today. And then I'll try to do it like first thing in the morning and maybe in the evening tomorrow. But 
I didn't film yesterday just because, I mean, what's the point? I think it's been officially a week now and I don't feel like it's like this nice bubbly starter, so. Okay, so welcome back to my kitchen. It's another day here. I've actually stopped recording my sourdough feedings because I just got so discouraged there for a while. I just felt like I wasn't seeing any activity. But then yesterday, I think I saw some activity. So today I had this sitting on our register right under our furnace. I had an epiphany, not an epiphany. I just read something. And I think that I may just have been not lied to, but misguided on how this should go. From what I had been seeing, it was saying that your sourdough starter should be ready in about five to seven days. Well, people, we are about like 10 days in, right? Maybe 11, I don't know, it's Sunday. I think I started on a Thursday. And I feel like I'm just now starting to see like even a little bit of activity. People are talking about like, oh, it should double and then come down. Listen, people, I have never seen this thing double. Never in my life. <laughs> so I read on another blog actually about this, that your sourdough starter shouldn't actually even be near ready until like day 14, like at least two weeks in, sometimes more if it's in a colder climate. So obviously we're in a colder climate, although things are supposed to be really nice and beautiful this week, which I'm very excited about. Okay, so a couple of things that I've also learned that I just didn't realize. I thought that the lid needed to be loose so that air could get in, so that it could have like fresh air. Turns out you need the lid loose so that air can get out. And so I've been putting on the lid, just I don't screw it on or anything, but I just set mine on top but then i'm looking into it today and i haven't touched it yet because yesterday when i put my spoon in i saw that there was actually bu bubbles another thing that i'm doing is that i think i am going to transfer this starter into a smaller cup so i said that i was going to keep it in this larger one so that it didn't bubble over but clearly this thing is not bubbling over at all <laughs> and so i'm going to go ahead and put it in this littler one and I think that that should just make stirring easier. Right now stirring is really hard in this tall jar. I feel like I have to like almost stick my hand down into the crud. Like I said, this is like day 10 or so. So again, I knew that something would go wrong in all of this, but I hope you guys know that my channel is not about perfection or even knowing it all, but it's just about the process and the journey and hopefully it's just encouragement that if you are like me and everything goes wrong all the time, you're not alone and <laughs> we can all learn together. Okay, so this is how we're looking. You guys can see that there are some little bubbles and it has never looked this active before. Sorry about those steps. My kids are all awake right now and in the house and that's just how it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of put my thing through it. <gasps> Yo, I have never had it look like that before. That looks like that's bubbles inside of there. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Okay, I'm sorry about the dirty dishes. It is lunchtime right now. And so I figured I would get all of my dishes out at once. <laughs> anyway, the result of that is that you guys can see the dirty dishes out on my counter. So I don't know how much of this I'm gonna save, probably just a couple spoonsfuls. I don't want to do too much. But you guys, I know I said I was going to go to 12 hour feedings, but truthfully, I just don't have the memory. Like I keep forgetting to do this. So 24 hours is what I've been able to stick to without fully falling off the wagon. So I'm just going to go ahead and toss the rest of this that's in here. And I'm going to give this jar a good wash because this thing is crusty and disgusting. So I actually just kind of stopped measuring and I have this little scoop in here and I've honestly just kind of been going off of how it looks. A little bit of water in here and see how thick it looks. Okay, so just for an idea of the thickness that I'm going for, I'm looking for something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and go with this heavy on the flour ratio that has been doing a little bit better. All right, and then I'm actually gonna take a little squeegee to this and see if I can clean it up so that I can see better if there's any activity that happens. All right, good enough. So here's where we're at right now. Okay, people, well, I believe that today is the day. It's gonna be the first day that I try to use my sourdough starter. The past few days, it's been looking 
bubbly and I'm gonna attempt to make a loaf today. I actually tried to video this yesterday, uh, but then I found out that you're supposed to feed your starter like four to 12 hours before you get started on a loaf and it had been 24 when I did this yesterday. So I did feed this at six o'clock this morning and it is currently 1.30. So it's been in here for five hours. It's not looking as bubbly as it has in the past, but we're just going to pray. <laughs> and you know what? If it turns out poorly, then, you know, it's a first attempt. It can't be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start with this baby, get it in there and see how this love turns out. So I'm going to go ahead and combine a half a cup of this with some flour and some water in my bowl and then I'm going to mix it up all together and we're going to let it rest for a little bit. I am hoping that I can get most of this done before our girls get home from school because then it just becomes chaos but listen if you guys haven't been deterred by all the chaos so far in this video then you're not leaving now so <laughs> but let's hope that doesn't happen. Okay, so let's see how this is doing here. Okay, we got, oh yeah, I think we're gonna be okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and scoop this into my one half cup and then pour that in and then we'll put in the flour and the water. All right, well, as you guys can see here, I measured out about a half a cup of my starter. Honestly, it used almost everything I had, but I made sure to leave a little bit left inside just for tomorrow's starter. And then I dropped this on in here. I actually think that it probably would have been easier to put the starter in after I had already mixed together the water and the flour. But here you guys can see that I am adding three and a half cups of flour. I clearly am having trouble <laughs> getting it all out, um, but then I combine this with one and a third cups of water and then two teaspoons of salt. I started mixing this all together with a wooden spoon and I tried my hardest, but I will say that at one point I did give up <laughs> the wooden spoon and just put my hands in. I will say that I took off all of my rings and that was imperative. Oh my gosh, if I had gotten this stuff into my rings, I can't imagine how hard that would have gotten to get out. So, and then after this, I started trying out these stretch and folds. My first round is really junky. I could feel all the different textures inside of the flower, but as I kept doing it, I would stretch and fold it. I would let it sit for a little bit with the lid on, and then I would come back after 15 minutes or so and try another stretch and fold. And I will say that after some time had passed, it was getting a little bit easier. Right, and just for context, I thought I would let you guys know that I am actually using my friend Lisa's recipe from the blog Farmhouse on Boone. If you guys are interested in looking at like exact measurements or time periods that I'm working with, I will link her blog and YouTube video below. Okay, so it is the next morning. We have our dough out of the fridge. We let it sit there overnight. It's been about 15 hours, I think, since I put it in the fridge. And we're gonna score it and get it in the oven. My oven has been preheating at 500 degrees for a while now, actually. So I actually put it in thinking it was only going to be like 30 minutes, and I think it's been at least an hour at this point. So we're gonna go ahead and get this on some parchment paper, score it up, get it in the cast iron Dutch oven, and then we'll see. Are you picking your nose? I'm telling you people. Oh, no, 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 don't, oh, Ivy. Oh my gosh. Okay, so. <laughs> Did we catch that? Ivy has been leaning over and smashing her full weight into this. I made it this far. So we'll see how that changes things. <laughs> I feel a little bit. No, no, please don't feel it anymore, okay? Hi. 
because you've been squishing it. Oh. I know. Why is that's it? how things go. Whoa. So cool. Yeah. I hope you. I hope. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you. Okay. All done. I put a lid on. You can put the lid on. Thank you. I do it. Okay. Gentle, please. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. What are you doing? I'm scoring it. I help you. No, thank you. Why? I don't want you to get cut. Okay, so this is how we are looking. I'm gonna pull out the Dutch oven from in here. We'll set it on the stove and I will drop this guy right in there. Are you excited? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't touch it, okay? Very hot. <gasps> You guys, it's looking really good so far. Oh, and it smells Mommy, awesome. Daddy. It's not ready yet. Oh, you guys, I'm so proud of myself already. I don't even care. Wait till it tastes horrible, but it looks so pretty. I know. It's ready. <gasps> oh my goodness. Yeah, it's ready. I see it. I see it. Yes. <gasps> what do you think? That look good? All right, y'all, my very first loaf. Is this, okay, that's pretty, right? I think it looks pretty good. Yeah? <laughs> okay, I am gonna cut into this baby. We're gonna see how it tastes. Okay, you guys, I have very dull knives in our house. So dangerous. So let's check out what the inside looks like. Man, do you guys hear that crunch? Oh, that looks so good. You wanna see? Okay, I legitimately do not have a knife that I think is going to cut through this. So, we may have to eat this like Jesus style and just eat with our hands. Well, the crust is crusty, I'll, I'll give you that. Okay, so here is our first real piece. Let's go ahead and get some butter and some honey on this. I get new butter. You got it. Thank you. Okay, don't put your fingers in the butter, please. I like butter. Honey! Like orange. Is it honey? Yummy. Yummy. I like butter and honey. We are ready to try our very first bite. Are you ready? That's pretty good. Hot. It is kind of hot. You like it? Friends, we did it. We legitimately did it, y'all. I probably should have taken like a better picture of that, but you know what? That's all right. I'm not very good at YouTube. <laughs> okay, everybody, will that wraps up today's video. Do you want to say thank you to everybody for joining us? Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you guys in next week's video. Bye. Bye.